Today, I want to talk about art and healing. I'm Christina West, the founder of Christina West Arts. I've been teaching since the early 90s privately, and now I've, I've dreamt a new dream. And the new dream is to bring my work out publicly. And we're just opening a new community arts uh, membership group. Oh, the group is, is based on telling our stories through art, through dream work, through um, diving into inquiry, to taking a look at our biographies, our life path, our life journey, what, what's led us here, what's not working for us, what areas are we stuck on. And this isn't just um, inner work, this is um, our artistic, our creative life as well. So if you're an artist, it works for you. If you're a poet, it works for you. If you're a writer, it works for you. If you're you know, wanting to just change your life and you might not consider yourself an artist, it works for you. It, this class is open for everybody, all levels. You don't have to be an artist to join. But I wanna to talk today about art and healing and just share a little bit of the work that I've done uh, privately. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just talk about some snippets. For a year and a half, I discovered Sandro Botticelli and we all know his Primavera, La Primavera painting that's in Italy. And he has the most extraordinary faces. It's been, it's been photographed and copied on, on everything from coffee cups to posters. But I was curious about why, why it's so beautiful. His, his beautiful images and who was she and what did she mean to him? And so I dove into as sort of a research project, Sandro Botticelli. Now, do you know that he was in love with Simonetta? She was a young girl. She was the wife of a, a well-known banker, but he fell completely, madly, wildly in love with her. And he never stopped loving her. He loved her as his muse and as his true love. And it's very rare that we run into stories of true love. So I spent a year and a half with Sandro and Simonetta and I painted her, I drew her, I copied her, I even traced the image of her. I wanted to live into Sandro's experience of this glorious woman. What did she mean to him? Could I penetrate that through my, um, through my inquiry, through my, through my contemplation, through my dreaming? And I discovered that if we look at La Primavera, every face is Simonetta. Every single one of those spring, summer, fall, they're all her. It's right there, you can see it yourself. And he even painted their story in the painting, which we don't have time to go into, but I can go into it later. And do you know that he requested her family? She died young. And he requested her family to, to allow him to be buried at her feet. This is how much he adored her. And they granted him permission. So Botticelli's grave is at the foot of where Simonetta is buried. So these are the kind of art and healing research projects I like doing, and I, I love teaching them as well. But for me, it was a multi-leveled research project. First, she's gorgeous, yes. Second, there's this love story, yes. But underneath is a lifetime of loving a woman. I mean, it's really a story of true love. And if I, as a person, as an individual, want to experience what that might be, because it's, she's still world famous, right? This was something extraordinary. So I lived into that for a year and a half, and I did a very small class called Intro to the Divine Feminine, which was just a sort of cross-cultural look at what we think the Divine Feminine is, because, because for Sandro, she was the epitome of the divine feminine. And she led him further in his soul life and his painting. So that's, that's one example. Another example is when I was at Berkeley and we had 9-11. And 
we were in a private school paying a lot of money and it seemed ridiculous um, and pointless really to be there. But I'm a doll maker. I've always been a doll maker. I've been in um, the magazines. I was a doll maker for years. And um, we heard that children lost their, their family in New York, of course. And so I was in Berkeley where there's so many people and the community is just really available. It's one of the greatest benefits of living in a thriving community. And so I just opened my studio and I said, we're going to make dolls for those children who lost their, their family in 9-11. So we had about, so I invited about eight or 10 artists. We came together and we made dolls and we just made dolls for the children who lost their parents in 9-11. And somebody in the group knew New York very well and she had connections and they actually connected with services that would uh, give those our dolls to the children and so that happened very very easily so 9-11 led to a year-long gratitude project for children's hospital oakland i curated a project called dolls for peace and we i worked in conjunction with children's hospital and we made dolls for the children it was a free workshop that we did for a year and we hauled in ironing boards and sewing machines and fabric and needles and pins and laces and buttons and beads everything so we invited the community in and our goal was to make a hundred dolls for children's hospital if we made a hundred dolls for children's hospital we could actually give the dolls to the children ourselves if we didn't make the hundred doll mark. We couldn't do that. So we really wanted to make these hundred dolls. And it took about a year. And it was so much fun. We had, of course, free publicity. We were on the radio all the time. I have so many stories about healing. Two gals came in. They were, um, I guess, in, they were with a correctional officer because they had to do community service work. And, you know, they were, you know, sort of uptight, angry when they came in. We handed them a cloth and fabric, uh, the doll pattern, which was very simple, and the needles and thread and buttons and beads. And within an hour, they were talking and laughing and talking with other people. And so if you're wondering what art and healing, what that actually means, it's a million different stories of an inner shift in the heart, which is actually called metanoia, metanoia. It's a change of heart and mind. And it's so subtle, but it happens in community. It happens over a table. It happens making a doll. It happens painting. It happens when we write. It happens when we share stories with friends. There's a, a subtle shift that enlivens us inwardly. And that's what this community arts group is going to be about. It's just, and you'll have an opportunity to do your own research projects to, well, I have lots of uh, teaching. I work with shamans for half my life. So I have wonderful techniques to bring uh, dream, dream work, uh, creative imagination, a dream incubation healing rituals. I mean, it's multifaceted, this, this group. So depending on where you're at and what you need, I'm going to be listening to you and see what it is that you need so that I can actually create the class for the group. There's a way of self-inquiry, which can be called contemplation, which is also called pondering, that we gently ask a question of our heart. And there's actually a rhythm to it. And there's a technique over a couple of days, which is a, a dream incubation technique, so that you can actually be sort of asking the spiritual world a question and receiving some information and asking a question. So one of the things that I teach is staying open to the anima mundi, to the world's soul. What does the world's soul want for us? How can we knit ourselves back into the warp and weft of the world that needs us now, that a lifetime spent in the fields of art and healing could actually, could actually help people now. And where is my focus now for the rest of my life? So I am so excited to be bringing uh, this work out. And the Alchemy Group is open for registration.
it's at a very affordable price for membership and you're guaranteed that price as a founding member until you know as we go further and the price goes up you'll be guaranteed that opening price so if you want to get your toes wet into the field of art and healing and this is a psychological this is shamanic this is academic this is religious this is indigenous traditions this is the whole world it isn't a one pointed focus it's a multi focus uh, stories myths legends creation myths fairy tales why do we love fairy tales what is it that's so healing and invigorating and has the ability to make us seven again inside. So I want to welcome you to think about it and to start now. As the Cheshire Cat says, every adventure starts with the first step. So you might be at a time in your life where you're really ready to transform, to engage, to empower, to ignite, to change your life. And the Art and Healing and Dream Group is a place for you to do that. So let's get creative together, shall we?